Hey everyone, it's Amr Zahir. And for white people, that's Amr Zahir. And for the American media, that's uncivilized. We have all witnessed the Russian invasion of Ukraine unfolding in front of our eyes. The American and European media have detailed the Ukrainian people's suffering. Ukrainians are brave, steadfast, and heroic for resisting invasion and occupation by any means necessary, including with Molotov cocktails. Their grandmothers are depicted as courageous wartime field generals. This is where they make the Molotov cocktails? Let those Russian shits come here, she says. Good for you, Granny. How did you learn how to make Molotov cocktails? Cocktails. You Googled it. Of course, she says. Wait, white people are not to Google how to make a Molotov cocktail? That's awesome. Oh, and unlike us Arabs, these Ukrainians are blonde haired, blue eyed, and civilized. But this isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan, you know, this is a relatively civilized. Now the hypocrisy, duplicity, deceit, and whiteness of it all is just too much to respond to with any level of politeness. But I'm going to try to address it all with civility, courtesy, and respect. No, I'm not. You think we're uncivilized? Since the beginning of the 20th century until today, when we've had modern warfare tactics, the white world has killed exponentially more people than the uncivilized brown world. 20 million in World War I, 60 million in World War II, pretty civilized. Was it civilized to drop an atomic bomb on Japanese civilians in Hiroshima, killing 80,000 people instantly, 30% of that city's population, ravaging future generations, and then knowing all that mass destruction and murder, doing the same thing in Nagasaki three days later? Are we really gonna be lectured about civility by a society that upon invading this land of America, probably massacred the natives, stole their land, expelled the rest of them, and then has the audacity to name its new states after the people they stole it from? Who do we steal this one from? They call themselves Dakota. Okay, cool, but there's a lot of land here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We'll do a north and a south. Very civilized. I'm definitely not going to be lectured about civility by society that upon arriving on the shores of America in the early 1600s, immediately started enslaving black people, did that for 150 years, then wrote a declaration and a bill of rights that said all men are created equal, then kept enslaving black people for another 100 years, then killed 600,000 of each other over whether or not slavery was a good idea, then raised statues of the people who thought it was a good idea, then implemented segregationist Jim Crow laws for another 100 years, and today still kills unarmed black people in the streets and crowdfunds to defend the murderers. I mean, give me a break. I'm gonna listen about civility from people who made up a war to invade Iraq. I mean, they lied about it, and we know they lied about it. 5,000 American soldiers needlessly died. One million Iraqis died. They burned and bombed libraries. They destroyed a civilization, and they did this. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right? Maybe he thinks he's you. President Bush has stated his determination to remove Saddam from power. In the view of many in Congress, they share that view. And I am among them. And I would vote that way again today. It was a right vote then, and it'd be a correct vote today. Is it civilized to continue to support and supply the bombing of Yemen's children and civilians, which has killed close to 400,000 people, despite a broken promise to end that inhumane policy? Let me tell you a few things about us uncivilized Arabs. Modern surgery and anesthesia were introduced to the world a thousand years ago by an Arab doctor. His name was Az Zahrawi. Many engineering mechanisms, including the crank chef, were invented over 800 years ago by an Arab inventor and engineer. His name was Al Jazari. The first university in the world was established in Morocco over 1200 years ago by an Arab philanthropist. Her name was Fatima al Fahiriya. Algebra came from us too. I mean, I know most Americans don't know how to do algebra. It was introduced to the world 1200 years ago by a Muslim mathematician in Baghdad, a man named Muhammad ibn Musa al Khawarizmi. In fact, there's still an Iraqi family named Al Jabri, like algebra, like they invented the shit. Meanwhile, in civilized America, we have a game show called Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader that nobody can win. There have been 250 contestants on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, okay? Two winners, just two. One's a school superintendent, so she already knows the questions that are on the show. The other is a Nobel Prize winner in physics. These are apparently the only two American adults that are smarter than a fifth grader. In America, if you're smarter than a fifth grader, you win a million dollars. In Iraq, if you're smarter than a fifth grader, you're 11 years old and you go to the sixth grade. That's it. There's no prize. And you know what? 800 years ago, the city of Baghdad had municipal sewage for its one million residents. At the same time, European kings and queens were still shitting in a hole in the ground. Who's civilized now? And Arabs also gave you this and this and this and this. And we're sorry about this. But we also gave you this. G -g 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 
And then we have the most civilized of them all, Israel, supported by almost the entire civilized white world. Israel massacres whole family and carpet bombs high-rise buildings in Gaza, a city made up of refugees, people who literally cannot escape. They even watch the bombings and cheer from their hilltops. Quite civilized. And what does Israel think of refugees? Well, if they're Jewish, we welcome them with open arms and make them citizens immediately. But if they are Yemeni Jewish, we have to steal their babies. And if they're African Jewish, we have to throw away their donated blood. And finally, and this is very important, if they're Palestinian refugees, they're a demographic threat, and they can never return to destroy our civilized democracy. Palestine has actually been ground zero for the civilized hypocrisy for centuries. You know that guy you civilized people pray to every Sunday? He's Palestinian. We prayed to him before you did. We still do. And he's our cousin, our uncivilized cousin. He doesn't belong to you. You can borrow him every now and then because we're generous, but you can't have him. You even tried to make one of our Palestinian heroes one of yours, civilized idiots. And where was the outrage when she was sent to jail for seven months? Get your own teenage hero standing up to occupation soldiers. Don't steal ours. So what I'm trying to say is this. War is ugly no matter the perpetrator or the victim. Refugees deserve sympathy, help, and justice no matter their ethnicity, race, religion, tribe, or whatever. Hopefully the civilized world will figure that out one day. So I look forward to an epic news story about an Arab grandmother supplying her neighborhood with homemade weapons to defend her homeland. Until then, I wish justice for every Ukrainian refugee of today and every other refugee of yesterday. And to the European and American civilized media and leaders around the world, you're welcome for the algebra, anesthesia, crankshafts, and universities. But as far as your racism and double standards go, I just want to say in the most civilized manner I can muster, fuck off. Thanks for watching.